Ah, sorry about that. This thing is ginormous. Anyways, this is the Sony PlayStation 5. And along with Microsoft's Xbox Series S and Series X, these new consoles have officially ushered us in to the next generation of video games. But while these high-powered consoles obviously focus on gaming, the last few generations have proven that these can be capable streaming devices as well. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the state of streaming and entertainment on this new breed of consoles. If you've been eyeing a new Xbox or PlayStation, this video might help. These are five things you should know about streaming apps on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and Series X. Number one, do any of these new specs actually help with streaming apps? Okay, if you've been following either console throughout the year, you've likely seen and heard key highlights as far as tech specs, but things like teraflops and real-time ray tracing are much, much more important for video games than they are for streaming apps. So let's take a moment to sum up some of the specs and features that could actually benefit or impact streaming performance on these new devices. First off, the PlayStation 5 and both flavors of the new Xbox have moved from the traditional spinning hard drives of earlier generations and shifted to dramatically faster SSDs, or solid-state drives. And to give you a sense of how much faster this type of storage is, last generation's most powerful console, the Xbox One X, boasted a laptop-grade hard drive not too different from this one, and peak data transfer speeds for these types of drives usually max out in the low hundreds of megabytes per second, and even less in real-world use. Now fast forward to this new generation of consoles, and we've swapped out those laptop-grade hard drives and their spitting platters for solid-state drives. On the new Xbox Series X, Microsoft is claiming data transfer rates of 2.4 gigabytes per second, or as the company puts it, over 40 times faster than the previous console generation's hard drive speeds. And over on PlayStation 5, Sony's making even bolder claims with its custom SSD setup that boasts around 5.5 gigabytes per second of raw data, or around 100 times faster than what the PlayStation 4 typically had access to. Now, to be clear, those huge speed improvements are more important for gaming purposes for things like startup times and level loading, but we'll also take a look at how that faster performance might help with streaming apps as well. More on that later. But beyond storage speed, these new consoles also support other streaming-friendly specs, including support for 4K HDR and even 8K resolutions. However, that 8K output is still TBD on the PlayStation side. Even though it boasts about 8K resolution support on the side of the box, the PlayStation 5 currently maxes out at 4K output even when hooked to an 8K display. However, Sony does say support is coming in the future. Also, some of the more advanced display features offered by HDMI 2.1, like variable refresh rate or auto low latency mode, don't appear to be ready for prime time on Sony's console just yet, but hopefully those are just a few software updates away. And by the way, those particular HDMI 2.1 features won't have a huge impact on streaming apps for what it's worth. One feature that could impact your streaming experience, however, is HDR support. And again, it looks like the PS5 is coming up a bit lacking on this front with support for HDR10, but not Dolby Vision out of the box. Meanwhile, the Xbox Series S and Series X support both Dolby Vision and the Dolby Atmos audio standard. And that's good news for streaming services that support those standards, but as we'll cover shortly, that Dolby Vision support on Xbox doesn't go quite as far as we might hope, but more on that in the next section. And again, it is possible Sony could add in Dolby Vision and or Dolby Atmos support via software update. After all, I do own a Sony 4K Blu-ray player that didn't have Dolby Vision support at first, but was later updated via new firmware. So here's hoping Sony can pull off something similar for the PS5. Number two, what about 4K Blu-ray support? Okay, so both the Xbox and PlayStation lines offer consoles with and without disk drives. On the Xbox side, the Series S drops the 4K Blu-ray drive and also boasts less powerful gaming hardware for a retail price of around $300. Meanwhile, the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition is essentially exactly like the standard PS5, just with that disk drive removed and coming with a cheaper price tag of around $100 less. However, if you're looking at these consoles and hoping they bring the state-of-the-art in 4K Blu-ray support, you might be a little surprised, at least for now. For one, even though the Xbox Series X supports Dolby Vision HDR for streaming apps and eventually for games, that support currently doesn't extend to physical media, aka 4K Blu-ray discs. And as we said earlier, the PS5 lacks Dolby Vision in general, so both consoles currently top out at HDR10 support for your 4K Blu-rays. And again, that could change in the future via software updates, and honestly, launching a video game console, even under normal circumstances during a normal year, is a complex affair and requires setting priorities for what gets done at launch and what we'll have to wait until later. So it's perhaps not surprising that streaming and physical media capabilities on these new consoles aren't quite as feature-rich as they could be at launch. 
And it's worth pointing out that this new generation of consoles is just getting started. Stay tuned. Number three, what's streaming app support like? Well, as for streaming app selection, both platforms support several of the biggest apps out there, but the Xbox side is currently winning the next-gen quantity fight. In all, we counted at least 50 streaming apps ready to go for the Xbox Series S and Series X at launch, and many of those were probably pulled straight from the previous generation's streaming app library, and you can select the usual suspects like Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu, and YouTube, as well as newer big names like Disney+, HBO Max, and Peacock. And beyond that, you'll also have access to options like CBS All Access, ESPN, Plex, and others. On the Sony side, hey, remember in the previous section when we mentioned companies focusing on gaming performance first and hopefully beefing up streaming features later? Well, that also applies to the PS5 streaming app selection as well. At launch, the PlayStation 5's list of supported streaming apps topped out at 20. And while that's significantly fewer than what's available on the Xbox line, you can see many of the big names supported here as well, including, again, Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, and Hulu. And again, like the Xbox platform, you also get the new Apple TV app. Now that number also doesn't match to the streaming app support you can currently find on the previous console, the PlayStation 4, and it's entirely possible many, if not most, of those apps will eventually find their way to the new console over time. And of course, we'll update you as we learn more as these consoles evolve over at CoreCuttersNews.com. Number four, how do streaming apps perform on these new consoles? Okay, time for some benchmarking. Let's see if those newfangled SSDs and the overall horsepower found in these new consoles can translate into strong streaming app performance. And one quick caveat to the benchmarking we're about to discuss, I was unable to get access to either the Xbox Series S or Series X before we produced this video. So I was unable to run our typical app suite benchmarks on either machine, but I'm hoping to get those numbers soon and I'll update the video description down below when I get that data in. And with that noted, let's get on to benchmarking. And if you've seen our recent hardware videos, You'll know this drill already, so feel free to sing along if you already know the words. We load up a series of apps on each device and time how long it takes to load each of the apps. We run that suite at least three times to get a solid average, and then we compare our findings. And for this matchup, we had to adjust our app collection slightly based on what's currently available on both consoles. So this test starts with Netflix, then YouTube, Prime Video, Disney+, Hulu, ESPN, Pluto TV, Crunchyroll, and then the new Apple TV app. And then lastly, we load up Netflix one more time at the end to see if the hardware can get the app up and running any faster the second time through. Okay, on to the results. And we started by testing a launch era PlayStation 4 for comparison. Now I should point out that this particular console has been modified with a higher capacity hard drive, but the performance shouldn't be too far off from what the original drive could provide. And with that in mind, how did the old school PS4 do? Well, not great. Overall, the PS4 scored a rather pedestrian 172.5 seconds to complete our test. But what about the new consoles? Well, on the PlayStation 5 side, we managed a much, much improved score of 90.24, which compares well to some of the higher-end dedicated streaming devices on the market. In fact, we ran the 2020 Roku Ultra through this same set of apps, and Roku's top-end streamer came away with a similar time of 85.17 seconds. And frankly, if it weren't for the strangely slow-loading Disney Plus app on the PS5, Sony's new console likely could have surpassed the Ultra's overall time. So in a nutshell, not bad for a game's first machine. In the end, streaming app performance is rather impressive on these new consoles, and we can't wait to see more app support for both platforms in the near future. Number 5. So can these new consoles cut it as do-it-all streaming boxes? Overall, it should be pretty clear that none of these consoles, even the lower spec Xbox Series S, comes even close to breaking a sweat when running these streaming apps. They each have performance to spare when it comes to this use case, and compared to previous generations, these new consoles tend to operate much, much quieter, which hopefully leads to less distracting noise when you're, say, watching Netflix or Disney+. On the app availability front, it's clear the Xbox line has the greater number of compatible streaming apps right at launch, but I highly doubt that Sony's deficit in this category will last all that long, especially considering how many streaming apps eventually came to the PS4. And like we've said a few times in this video, odds are Microsoft and Sony had to prioritize a few things to launch their respective platforms on time this year, and gaming, understandably, took precedence. And honestly, if you're trying to decide between these two platforms based on their streaming service support alone, well, first I'd suggest you might be going about this the wrong way, but I'd also say make your choice based on the games you'd like to play first. Even Sony's smaller streaming app lineup still includes many of the big name players, and both platforms will only improve over time. 
And as for features like Dolby Vision coming to the PlayStation line or the Xbox Series X's Blu-ray drive, well, that's less certain at this point, but even without that support, I think it's safe to say that both consoles should serve you well as both a gaming and a streaming platform for a while to come. But again, this generation is just getting started and both companies are still working out a variety of kinks on their new hardware. Microsoft has a running list of known issues on the support page, which includes issues like pixelated frames on the Peacock app, and a note that teams are still working on the issue. Meanwhile, I experienced a system crash during our streaming app testing on the PlayStation 5, and Sony and its first-party studios are also working on their own bugs and issues with their new console as well. So if you've been eyeing any of these new consoles, keep a close, close eye on future system firmware updates to help remedy issues. And there you go, those are five things you should know about streaming apps on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and Series X. If you've been lucky enough to snag any of these new consoles, of course, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Although, I do ask you to keep it nice and civil. I know that gaming fans can get a bit passionate about their platforms of choice, but we're all friends here. In any case, thank you all for tuning in this week. If you're new here, please do consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons down below on Wednesdays. Jess hosts our live Q&A sessions, and then on Thursday, we explore specific topics like, say, brand new game consoles. And then we wrap up the week on Friday with Cord Cutting Weekly. And until next time, thanks again for watching. My name is Philip Palermo. I'll see you next time. Take care.